A few weeks ago, I uploaded a review of the Acer VG270UP, in which I concluded that this is a great monitor for gamers who don't want to sacrifice picture quality for content creation or consumption. And what's also important, the Acer doesn't break the bank. I'll leave a link to my full review in the description down below. However, in my review I only briefly covered ghosting, pixel response times or motion artifacts in general. As I got many comments asking for more in-depth information about this topic, I went ahead and got myself a camera sliding rail to use the pursuit camera technique. This technique was invented by Blurbusters, yes, those UFO guys, and allows to accurately capture the motion characteristics of a display, including ghosting, motion blur and overdrive artifacts. For those of you who are interested, I leave a link to Blurbusters in-depth article about this technique in the description. So let's put the VG270UP to the test. This test was done at a refresh rate of 144Hz at full brightness with both VRB and overdrive turned off. Free or G-Sync respectively were turned off as well, though I couldn't find any effects of adaptive sync on the motion characteristics of the monitor. Turning on free or G-Sync does however lock the overdrive mode to normal. So let's compare overdrive off to normal. There's obviously no difference despite the first exposure being a bit darker. Zooming in on the middle track and comparing both settings side by side makes this even clearer. Both motion blur and ghosting look identical. The ghosting artifacts can be observed at the left edge, hence the trailing edge of the UFO. I would consider this to be a decent result for an IPS display. The Acer does however provide an additional overdrive setting called Extreme. Let's see how this compares. Well yeah, uh, not good obviously. Instead of ghosting, the trailing edge now exhibits a huge amount of inverse ghosting, which is caused by pixels overshooting the desired color value. As if this wasn't bad enough, setting the overdrive to extreme also deactivates free and G-Sync. So I would absolutely avoid setting the overdrive to extreme. In addition to the different overdrive modes, the VG270UP does provide a setting called VRB or Visual Response Boost. After all, that's just a fancy name for blur reduction. This technique tries to reduce motion blur caused by the human eye tracking a moving object on the screen. Common LCD displays retain an image as long as a new image needs to be displayed. This sample and hold principle does however create motion blur when tracking a moving object with the eye on an appropriate camera. I won't go too in depth here, but turning off the backlight shortly after an image has been displayed can drastically reduce this kind of motion blur. So let's see how ASUS VRB keeps up here. Setting VRB to normal actually does a pretty good job in reducing motion blur. The right UFO is much less blurry than the UFO on the left without the blur reduction technique. We can even see the eyebrows of the little alien which are covered with motion blur in the picture on the left. VRB does obviously not help against ghosting. Looking at the left edge of the UFO we can now see the individual ghost images as they are not masked by motion blur anymore. This effect is also referred to as strobe crosstalk. Setting VRB to extreme does reduce motion blur even further. Looking at the actual monitor in person, I wouldn't necessarily say the difference between normal and extreme is perceivable, but the pursuit camera technique does a good job making even those small differences clear. VRB can also be combined with extreme overdrive. Still not usable or even worse than without VRB, as the inverse UFOs can now be seen even more clearly. Definitely past that setting. So you probably are thinking about just setting VRB to extreme and overdrive to normal and being good to go. Sadly though, it isn't that easy as activating VRB comes at a cost. Firstly, VRB does not work together with adaptive sync, hence free or G-Sync. Instead the refresh rate needs to remain constant as it does with other common blur reduction techniques from other manufacturers. Additionally, VRB reduces the maximum brightness of the monitor quite substantially as the screen effectively remains black for a good amount of time. Depending on the strength of the VRB setting, the brightness will be reduced by different amounts. And furthermore, the brightness cannot be controlled anymore. So you maybe see yourself having a too dark picture during daylight while burning your eyes at night. Setting VRB to normal, I measured a brightness of about 142 candelas per square meter, which is equivalent to a brightness setting of 24 with VRB turned off. Setting the brightness to 100 without VRB leads to 359 candelas per square meter, so more than double of what you can get with VRB activated. 
The extreme mode reduces the brightness even further to just 77 candidas per square meter, which corresponds to a brightness setting of 6 without VRB. Conveniently though, a brightness of around 140 candelas per square meter is pretty perfect for moderate daylight and about 80 candelas are suitable for darker environments. So you could switch between normal and extreme VRB to control the monitor's brightness. If you want to use the monitor in bright environments or like to utilize free or G-Sync, VRB is useless though. This leads me to some recommendations. If you don't like tearing, you obviously want to use free or G-Sync that will automatically set overdrive to normal and turn off VRB. The same settings apply if you want to change the brightness of the display in the full 100 steps or need to go beyond a brightness of about 140 candelas per square meter or below about 80. Using free or G-Sync will of course require capping your frame rate below 144 fps at something like for instance 140 fps to work as intended. I did some tutorials on how to do that in different games, I will leave links in the description. If you on the other hand see yourself gaming at higher frame rates than 144fps and if you're not bothered by tearing, you may want to give VRB a try. I would recommend using the VRB normal setting for gaming in moderate daylight. For gaming sessions at night, in dim lighting conditions, you want to change the VRB mode to extreme to reduce the brightness and get even less blur. In case you're constantly gaming in a brightly lit room, you need to pass VRB completely as the maximum brightness will be too low. I hope you liked this little follow-up. Check out my original review if you haven't already. Consider to subscribe and thanks for watching.